What's up guys? Welcome to your big 100th Android tutorial for the new Boston. <sighs> yeah. If you've made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. Um, yeah, I don't know about that intro. I was trying to do something crazy since I'm going crazy. Um, after 100, making 100 tutorials talking to the computer screen, um, you tend to go crazy a little bit. I don't know why Bucky isn't in an insane asylum right now because he's done so many. But uh, what we're going to do in this tutorial is learn how to load data with this button load. And in the next tutorial after this one, I'm going to show you guys how to properly save and properly load data um, because, yeah, this is the frame. This is, I mean, nothing new for the most part. This is how you do it you with the file input and output stream. Um, but uh, there's a better way um, that you want to code. So I'll show you that in the next tutorial. But first, let's get into it. Let's start our load button here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a file input stream now. So we're going to just say file input stream. And we're going to call this FIS for file input stream. Because again, file output stream is to save data. And this is to kind of read the data, load the data, all that good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to open file input instead of open file output like we did within our onCreate method. And again, just within the within uh, these parentheses, we're just going to say our file name. Again, that's our string reference, kind of our path name. And again, we're going to have to surround this with a try and catch. So we're just going to say surround with try and catch right here. And uh, within here, after we open it, we want to set up a byte array. So what we're going to do is we're going to say byte <clears throat> array, which is basically going to read all the data, all the bytes, and all that stuff. So we're just going to say um, data array, something like that. And what we're going to set this equal to is a new byte. And we're going to reference uh, within our square brackets here is um, just getting the length of our file input stream. So we're going to say file input stream dot available. And basically that's going to return the amount of you know bytes this file input stream has. Uh, so it's just setting our array up to the same length as whatever how many, however many bytes is in our file input stream. So again we get an error we just need to add another catch clause to our surrounding try. And that's input output stream exception and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say while file input stream dot read does not um, and we're gonna say read data array like this and I'll explain everything as we go here and does not equal negative one so what we're doing here uh, let me just talk over everything real quick. We set up a file input stream, which is referring to our file name, which is that string reference. Then we're getting setting up a, a byte array. Um, and that's basically going to get the length of our input stream, how many bytes it is. And then what we're going to do is say while it is not equal to negative 1. So what it's going to do is it's going to read through our file input stream. And once it reads through everything, it's going to set this read up to negative 1. So once it hits negative 1, we know we've read everything for the most part. So that's just what this means. It's pretty uh, standard in Java and all that stuff. But just know that this negative 1 just means uh, we've read everything for the most part from our file input stream, um, which has the length or this many bytes for the most part because that's what we set up here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a string. So we're going to call this collected, something like this. And above our try, we're just going to set up this string here. So string collected initially equals null when we hit our load button. And then we're going to set this collected string equal to a new string. And within here, we're going to say our data array. And then all we have to do is close our file input stream. So what we can do is we can either say like close right here 
or what we can do is kind of refer to just to uh, get again familiar with the try catch and finally we can also say finally uh, referring to after everything's done uh, we kind of did this with our splash activity I believe so we're just gonna say finally file input stream dot close and it's gonna give us an error because we set up our file input stream within this try so what we're also gonna do is just copy this or cut it and then just say file input stream and again above our try we're just gonna hit paste equals null and then we have to surround this with a try and catch as well so we're just gonna hover over and say try and catch and it looks kinda complicated but it's really not that bad and that's pretty much this tutorial <clears throat> let me talk through everything that we've done so basically we set up a string called collected this is gonna be all of our data that we read we set up a file input stream and both of those are null and then once we try um, once we try to get our file input stream set up uh, what we're gonna set that up to equal is opening file input referring to the file uh, or referring to the string name which is basically you can think of as a path of some sort and, and then what's gonna do is it's gonna read that that file input stream and get how many bytes is available and then it's gonna set up a byte array which we call data array then while our file put in our file input stream is reading um, all of those bytes for the most part um, and as long as that's not equal to negative one because when it equals negative one we're done it's gonna break out of our while loop and while that's happening we set up the string which was null and now it's just gonna equal a new string according to the data that it's reading for the most part again our bit array as it cycles through this while loop it'll add to that as well so it's gonna basically be whatever is our data that we saved and then we have these catch exceptions for file not found and file or input output exception and then we say finally after everything's done just close our input stream and we need to surround that with a try and a catch as well so input output exception here as well so hopefully you guys kinda understand that it's it's not too difficult for the most part and also what we can do is we can now set our text view equal to the data that we read so all we're gonna do is say our text view which we call data results and then dot set text and then we're gonna set it up to this collected string that we read for the most part so now it's gonna change that text view when we hit the load button um, yeah this does look a lot more complicated for the most part than the shared preferences and if you again you're just saving one variable like a string you probably want to use shared preferences um, but I just want to get you guys familiar with the input output streams and uh, working that way because when we work with external data that's kind of the concepts that we're gonna to have to know so thanks again for watching guys hopefully it wasn't too confusing and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial peace